They were originally invented by Bernard uh, Motessier. Really? show you our little Charlie Noble. Okay, first we had to have the uh, this part built, the guard, because this one's not removable. I'd prefer to have one that, that you can remove, remove and, you and plug. Wow, that's beautiful. It's got two smoke bells because it has a double wall flue, it pulls the combustion air in on the outside. Oh, it does. Oh, yeah. I see. I'm not sure that's a good thing, but it sounded good in the brochure. Oh, <laughs> both intake and exhaust. Yeah. And the cutest little canvas cover. <laughs> so the interesting thing is that when Don was making this, this is stiff here. And the stiffener is actually a flexible cutting board. We have several of those because they make good gaskets in a pinch. Use them for a flexible cutting board. Yep, yeah, just plastic wow. thin sheets. Yeah. You know, and just and then it's protected from the sun by this umbrella and works nicely. Here wow. you've got a, a big spinnaker pole. Yeah. It's a bit big. big. It's a bit big. Yeah. A it's, little, we hard need to, a smaller one. I, because we went from being way too small for the boat to way too big. So when we would like to replace that with something lighter weight that the two of us can handle more easily. We use it, not often, because it is a little bit unwieldy. Yeah, yeah, um, it's enormous. Yeah, it, it's a monster. Wow. But uh, it's good because, I mean, it's attached, you know, you slide it down, it's still attached to the boat and all yep. that stuff. Does it rattle? Well, no, nope. no it's, it's it's not, it doesn't it's move at tight. all because of this. Yeah, it wow. actually <coughs> locks in there. You'll see a piece of white plastic. Pieces. What that does is uh, compacts the track. You actually, this is actually in a very slight bend when you uh, snap it. That's oh yeah, why it's not moving. I see. That's a good trick. I love these steps. Are yeah, they, I like are they those great? So they're all the way up both masts. Yeah. We like those steps because they're small elegant don't interrupt the wind flow now here's the disadvantage you can't go up barefooted because they're oh, yeah. spiky unless you got real tough feet but oh. you go up in sneakers and they have really good traction and um don't they, snag halyards. they don't the halyards never snag on them perfect yeah i see the uh the, the, the top little, yeah oh, these like little spiky things Fred. i think they're on the third manufacturer uh, they're still being made today. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, I wish I had known about them when I was putting mass steps on my boat. Right. Oh, Much yeah. These nicer. are elegant. And I believe yeah. that they were originally invented by Bernard uh, Motessier. Really? Yeah. Oh. So he had something like that nailed or screwed to his telephone pole mast. So, <laughs> yeah. Joshua.
not the original mast to the boat. We were in Brunswick, Georgia, getting ready to come north offshore, and Don went up to do a rigging check before we left in Georgia, and he found a crack in the, in the mast tube. Oh my God! Yeah, we didn't know about it. And uh, so we emailed all our friends that we knew, you know, riggers and people who would be in the know had been cruising a lot, and they said, don't sail with it. No, a cracked and, mast. And no. it was about this long, friend, it was right where, it, it was a single spreader rig, um, and uh, right bend and a crack where the, the uh, spreader had been aft, had been brought aft and crinkled the, um, the mast and then cracked it. It kind of looked like old wood. You oh know, it was God. aluminum um, built in Annapolis. You must and have been horrified to see Yeah, that. it was like, how did it get there? How did we not know? Yeah. Well, you know, we had theories about it, but we don't know for sure. Our rigger said, well, I'm going to quote you an in the mast unit. You know, we said, we don't want that. He no. Said, it's no problem. We'll, yeah. we'll, it's no it, problem for me to quote it. We did an email survey to, again, send it out to all the cruisers, 50 people or whatever, and said, you know, would you have a conventional or, or in the mast roller furling? And it came back 50-50. So here's the deal. If you have to buy a new mast, it's literally... Very little difference. A hundred or two hundred dollars difference in price between a conventional mast with, with all the things we like, you know, mm -hmm. low friction uh, slides, uh, lazy jacks, Riffing. single line reefing. You add all those goodies to a conventional okay, rig and it's basically the same price as this. Wow. wow. Roller furling in the mast. And do, you, do you like it? Do you like it? it? You love it. <laughs> Absolutely. First time out, we were oh, crossing yeah. Chesapeake Bay and uh, we were going into Knapp's Narrows. We were in a position where we had no maneuvering room and a storm blew up and we, we were going downwind in 35 knots with no room to turn. Oh. We rolled the mainsail up going downwind in 35 knots. Wow. It wasn't pretty, but it worked. And it wasn't good on the sail, but you yeah, know, in an emergency, to... you switch. You know, if you can get it done, that's great. Yeah. Have you ever had any problems with the sail jamming in any way as you're trying to furl it? Well, and... when we first the first sail we had made, well, it's still the same sail, but the the uh, sailmaker uh, recommended vertical battens. They're yep. short, yep. really thin. We had those put in, and the first few years was fine. After a while, those battens would hang up because there was extra cloth all bunched. Never we had an out. issue putting the sail in, but it's more work to pull it out than it is to put put it in. I really like Selden because oh, yeah. there's here there's a uh, this is the drum where we drive. The oh my foam, god! And it's actually geared to the foil. Yeah, and I can put a winch handle in here and go. It's got a ratchet. If you want to um, reef, you come up here and put the ratchet in, the sail will not come out. It will only go in. It's really well engineered and this is probably third generation. You know there was a time when the cruising gurus said never put a roller furling Genoa on a boat. Right. Because they're so trouble prone and you will have all these problems you'll end up cutting away your head sail well it's wow. a mature technology now and we all use it now everybody every every, every cruising every boat, boat out, every boat here in so, the yard all yep. the bad things you hear about in the mass roller furling for the most part come from older systems this is a real mature technology and i trust it a lot more than the roller boom at wow. this point really give the roller boom 15 years and definitely be the way to go. You know, we're still in the first generation of that. Of roller furling booms. Yeah. Well, so you think that today's modern roller furling mass technology is perfected to the point where it's... It's, it's good. Uh, it's good to go. So back to those emails. Yeah. <laughs> we got a 50-50 response. Never, never put a roller furling main on a boat versus... Yes. Yes. Hmm. Hmm. We go, now what do we do? <laughs> what a so, big decision. So we sent another email and we said, what experience do you have with roller furling in the mast? Well, the 50% that said never do it didn't have any experience. <laughs> and among the people who said do it were some 
sailors that we really uh, respect. The common knowledge doesn't catch up very quickly with reality sometimes. I've just heard so many horror stories of roller furling in the mass, jamming when you're trying to furl it in the worst storm situation yeah. and, and yeah. it gets jammed. I actually uh, was on a boat crossing the Atlantic where it got jammed and it was a real nightmare. So it's really interesting to hear that. Right. And we had that same experience on a charter boat, actually. Yeah. And when the... Yeah. Uh, but it was old. When the, when old. the charter... Um, it was old. Mechanic came... Yeah. The way he solved the problem, he put his hand inside the mast. This was the old so this is a big hole. Charleston system that has the rope, wormy rope, if you know what I mean. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He just put his hand in there and turned the foil, oh. and it worked. And then and then so, he also said use a spoon <laughs> in there to because to, it would jam up coming out, and he said, well, you have to go up there with a spoon and, and get it out. Oh, that sounds so great. So there are tricks. <laughs> that was news to us. We've never had to do that on this. Wow. No, and this was put in in 2005. 2005. Late 2005. Yeah, October. Well, I think it's a good system. I don't think you can even buy one of these anymore, but no. it still works fine. Still works just fine, and block and tackle to tighten it down yeah, and, we've, and, we've and got, wire. Huh. They've got a double purchase on this system, and they use the wire for the high tensile side. So you're actually pulling on the wire with a 4 to 1, and the wire itself makes a 2 to 1, it looks like. Wow, so you can get that boom vang really tight. Tighter than you Got want to. a lot of purchase yeah. on it. Huh. You can make yeah, that, you, you can, can make get the, it scary tight. You yeah, can make you can. your boom look like a banana.